So I'm going sideways all the way up. I reach up and then I turn the wheel and do a 180. My first car I think was the Ford 550. My father gave that to me around 2013. I was still in ninth grade. So first what I got, uh, so what I did with the car was full exhaust from uh, down pipe to uh, tips. I did this uh, black wrap on it, the neon green, the stripes and everything, the wheels. And then uh, I remember I had this challenge with my father. He saw the car and he made fun of me. He was like, uh, what did you do the, to the car? The car was brand new, it was blah, blah, blah. He did all these uh, mods to it. Now it's gonna depreciate in uh, price and everything and, and so forth. So he was like, uh, I bet after the mods that you've done, that uh, you can't uh, you can't sell it for above than fifty thousand. And he was dead serious about it. So the same day, what I did is <laughs> I went out with the car, I drove it to Masrakhor to the market. Uh, I got the cash. It was around fifty-five to sixty thousand. I got the cash uh, with me, I got in a taxi, I went back home. Uh, the deal was, if you got more than 50, uh, he would have bought me whatever car I wanted that time. As soon as I got the cash, I went back and I told him, this is the cash. He told me I can't do it. This is the uh, 60,000. I got the Nissan Petrol Vitk, beige color, couple of mods on it. The car was still brand new, I remember. <laughs> uh, I took it for the first uh, checkup, that was a uh, 1,000 uh, K checkup. And the fir first checkup, the car was already modified, so they saw it in the showroom and they didn't know what was the, what was wrong with the exhaust. They told me if I wanted to change uh, back to the stock one because there was something wrong with my exhaust. After that came my uh, Land Cruiser, which I did uh, the turbo uh, kit on it. I started collecting my money. I had the goal in my mind that I was getting the new G63. So I had one ordered that was supposed to be arrived. 2019 on the 1st of January. Once I paid the first payment, which was uh, for, to reserve the car, uh, he already told me that the car would reach about me. So that was too long for me. I couldn't stay that long without the car. Um, that's why I said I would take an alternative, which was the LX570. That car I kept completely stuck. It was the most agonizing car I had. I couldn't drive anything stock. I reached a point where it was like this day or another I'm gonna get the supercharger for the Lexus. When I reached that point I saw the MK5 Supra. I heard the concept of it. I saw the first pictures of it when it first got launched. So I had called the guy. I told him can I come for a test drive? He told me yeah sure I'm here till 5. So I go out to the market. I get in the, uh, the car with the showroom guy and he let me go out for a test drive. I told him I'm gonna flash the car, I wanna try the car, so I wanna know how, how much potential it has. So it's like, it's fine. I remember the only thing that I did was just disconnected the first traction. Went out for a spin, burnouts, drifts, all the way around the, the market. I was still shocked about how much the car performed. So I first looked at the prices uh, that were offered in the market, in the Nasrachar market, and the prices were over there were insane. Like, I've, I know the price. I know the price online. I've seen the price online. I've, I've asked the showroom. Prices in the Toyota showroom was around 230K. So the prices that were offered in the Nasrachar uh, market, some guys reached 300,000. Whatever, I didn't want to hurt my head with, with them, so I told them, okay, thank you very much. I went to the showroom with my friends, just asking, I want to know what are the prices are. So he told me that the prices are fixed for the Sopra, and uh, the Sopra actually is the uh, first car to be sold at that type. All the models have the exact same uh, specifications, and the, and the only difference between them uh, is the color. And uh, based on the color, uh, the price is gonna vary. And I asked uh, your Rashid, about um, what car uh, what color should I get. I, rem I still remember the day that I got the phone call. He told me everything's done from my side. All I need from you right now is for you to go get the insurance paper and uh, give me the, uh, get me the number plate that you want on the car and uh, you're gonna get the car by today. I showed up in the showroom. I gave them the insurance papers. I got the number plate. I got the car delivered by the next day. I took the car. I drove it out of the showroom and there was this upward slope in the showroom before I leave. I was like, okay, I tried the first uh, traction off. I was like, I'm gonna try all the way the traction off and the sport mode. So I hit the sport uh, button. Um, I hold on the traction button for five seconds or so. And uh, I slam the throttle. The car keeps on going sideways all the way up the slope. And then as soon as you get up the slope, you, get, you have to do a U-turn. So 
I'm going sideways all the way up. I reach up and then I turn the wheel and do a 180. And my friend sitting right next to me, he still doesn't know anything about the Sobra. He's super hyped. He's like Khalifa, I believe. And he tells me that uh, he's gonna try to sell his car and get uh, a Sobra as well. First, uh, when I got it, I thought of doing it. So I called you Rashid, I told you uh, I bought the car. Uh, obviously, I'm not gonna drive it stock. We're gonna have to modify it as soon as possible. So, what do you think you can do first? I've heard uh, these turbo swaps uh, they have for the Sobra, which gets the car up to 700, 700 horsepower or so. So, you tell me, uh, Khalifa, this is still a brand new car. Uh, try not to go uh, to wreck it all the way through. Just try doing it step by step. Um, we're gonna do the downpipe first by the 1000k checkup and then uh, by the second uh, checkup we're gonna do the complete exhaust system all the way to the back tips and by the third checkup we're gonna do the the turbo swap i was like okay that's what that's what we're gonna do i just had hit my 1000 kilometers called the toyota showroom i told them i finished the 1000 kilometers what can i bring it for the checkup so they tell me uh, there isn't any 1000 checkup. Your first checkup is at 12K. So at that moment, uh, same moment, uh, I phoned you, I called you Rajad, uh, I brought the car, we brought it up the jack. We took all the measurements and everything for the downpipe. And then uh, it was gonna, it was gonna be any moment now, uh, starting the downpipe. That's when we did the accident to the Sopra. What happened was we went out uh, early in the morning. We had some chores to do. Uh, we went to the police station, and uh, we were just coming back, uh, going back to Al Mazar, where my house is. So um, there's this road in Mahesna. It's usually very cloudy at around uh, three-ish because that's the time uh, all schools finish and everybody's uh, going to pick up their children and so on and so forth. There is this uh, pickup that uh, signals to come right, uh, to come in front of us because the lane that he's on uh, can't uh, go straight. So um, my friend Rais was uh, the driving. So uh, he gives way for the pickup to come in front of us and then uh, and the signals just got uh, just turned green. We were still running. So at the signal turned green but then there was traffic on the signal. So the signal was completely stopped. The guy that uh, that just uh, came in front of us hadn't uh, paid attention to the road in front of him. So as soon as he got in front of us, he was, it was like two seconds, three seconds maybe. He came in front of us and no hazard lights, no brake lights, nothing. All I saw was uh, smoke coming out of his tires and uh, he was sliding, until, uh, sl sliding onto the car in front of him. So he hit the car in front of him. By the time that um, I told him to stop, we had already hit the car. Uh, we come out, we see the car. Uh, the car didn't didn't get hurt as bad as I thought. Um, my front bumper uh, got hit in the hook, uh, right in the center between the headlights. So the only the, the only damage was done to the car was the plastic the bumper, the front bumper got bent. So I was like, okay, we're gonna take it to the showroom. We're gonna get it fixed. Uh, I wouldn't get worked out. Of, I worked up on it either way. I'm modding the car either way. I might uh, try to do something with the uh, the stock bumper that uh, that's still there. I might do a, a scoop intercooler uh, mount. So I was trying to cheer myself up to not get bumped about it. So we take it to the showroom. Uh, the car is there. Um, they told me that your friend's license is expired. They can't even open the file for the car until he renews his license and um, which, well, what we thought was going to be a one day, two day process turned out to be second week I think right now and uh, we're still trying to finish the process with his license and the insurance and everything and um, that's pretty much it. Fight back.